Day after day, the Ukrainian port of Mariupol has withstood Russia's relentless onslaught and refused to surrender. But the city is all but destroyed. Many have left. Supplies of basic goods are running out fast. Is this how Russia plans to strangle other cities across Ukraine? My guest this week is Markian Lubkivsky, advisor to the country's Minister of Defense. How long can this all go on? Till the last Ukrainian will be killed. And this is not only nice words. So the moral and the spirit of Ukrainians are very, is very high. As the fighting intensifies, we look at the narrow path to a peace accord and the prospect that Ukraine faces years of stalemate. What motivates people enduring such dire conditions? And while they give their life and their future for their country, do they feel that their allies, who promised so much, have given enough? All that and much more on Conflict Zone. Markian Lubkivsky, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you for having me with you. As Russia steps up its attacks, fighting words from your president, Ukraine, he said, will never bow to Russian ultimatums. And he made clear there'd be no compromises on territorial integrity or sovereignty. But he wants to talk to Mr. Putin. Is there anything to suggest that Russia wants to talk constructively to him? Uh, thank you, Tim. Uh, look, uh, this initiative was raised a couple of times by President Zelensky. And uh, yeah, he is ready to speak to President Putin to discuss all issues, including military, humanitarian, political. But we, are, we, we still did not get any, any reply from the Russian side that Russian side is ready to uh, discuss that. Let me remind you one, one very interesting thing for me as a diplomat. You remember recently uh, were negotiations between Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Dmitry Kuleba, and his counterpart, Minister Lavrov. And uh, after that negotiations, there was a statement made by Lavrov. He said that Russia will never attack any European or other European country. And after that, he added, and Russia never attacked Ukraine. Uh, this, so, so, even, so even if you got a deal, you wouldn't trust it? Is that uh, what you're saying? We need to have very strong guarantees provided not only by Russia, but also by such countries as the uh, United States, United Kingdom, uh, G7, European countries, EU, and probably our neighbors. You had those guarantees, or some of those guarantees, with the Budapest Memorandum going back to 1994, guaranteeing your security in return for you giving up your nuclear weapons. That didn't work so well then, did it? What makes you think that, it would uh, work better now? We need to establish new system of security. You're absolutely right saying that Budapest Memorandum never worked. And uh, now we need to include all parties and to, to find such guarantees which should be really workable for everybody, not only for Ukraine. Because in, in these circumstances, uh, nobody can be safe. Uh, look, today uh, Putin attacked Ukraine. Why tomorrow he wouldn't attack Poland or Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia? Mm. Nobody can be sure right now. A week ago, your president's top negotiator, Mikhailo Podolyak, went so far as to say the Russian position had softened significantly. We have much confidence, he said, that we'll have a ceasefire in the coming days. What happened to that confidence? I think that there are two reasons. So I cannot disclose the matter of negotiations. I'm not the part of negotiating team. But there are two main reasons why uh, position or approach of Russian Federation became much more softer. First of all, the losses of Russia in Ukraine are, are tremendous. They, the, the Russians lost already 15,000 their soldiers here. And the second thing, that uh, sanctions are working. So it, these two reasons are the, the base or, or 
or the matter why Russians are, are ready to speak to speak in a much more softer way. But there's some suggestion in the West that Russia sees negotiations not as a way to end conflict, but as part of that conflict. As one diplomat said, just a way of dialing up and dialing down the tempo to suit Russia's needs. What do you think? We, we, don't, we don't want to, to uh, face with a frozen conflict. You are absolutely right. I agree with you. So, And this is the strategy or the tactics of Russia. Russia made uh, a couple of frozen conflicts on the territory of Soviet Union, <coughs> Azerbaijan, Georgia, uh, Moldova. So, And probably, if they will not succeed in the coming days, and they will not, they will try, they will try to frozen the conflict. You say you don't want a frozen conflict, but how long can you go on like this with critical shortages of food, water and medicine in the main areas under attack, tens of thousands of people homeless, people sleeping in basements, people dying on the streets? How long can this last? Till the last Ukrainian will be killed. And this is not only nice words. So the moral and the spirit of Ukrainians are very, is very high. And the spirit and the experience and effectiveness of Ukrainian army as well. So we will fight till the end. The situation is really very dramatic if we are speaking about such cities as Mariupol, as uh, Chernihiv and then Kharkiv. So uh, I, I got an impression that Putin is going to, to demolish Ukraine totally and to kill all Ukrainians. So <laughs> it look like, looks like this is his strategy and this is his main goal. But we will fight till the end. In the US, President Biden has been warning that Russia could use chemical and biological weapons. How seriously do you take that threat? Very seriously. First, uh, there were accusations uh, regarding Ukraine that Ukraine will use these chemical weapons that we are working on, on birds taking the biological weapons to, to, to Russia or munition. This is crazy. So we should be ready. Everybody should be ready. And uh, don't forget that Russia is uh, one of nuclear powers. So they can use also nuclear weapons. And this is, this is terrible. So you remember that a couple of days ago, uh, Zaporizhia nuclear station was attacked with the Russian missiles. So that's why we are, we are ready for any kind of scenarios. In the last 72 hours, your forces admitted they'd lost access to the Sea of Azov, that strip of coastline that connects Crimea to the breakaway regions of Donetsk and Lukansk. How serious is that loss for you? The situation in Mariupol is very serious. Steve. So that's why we are trying to take care and to rescue other, other people. So the spirit of people defending, I mean, uh, soldiers, Ukrainian soldiers defending uh, Mariupol is, is very high. So uh, again, they will, they, will, they will fight till the end. So the main thing for us is to create, to establish uh, so-called humanitarian corridors and uh, uh, take people out from the areas which are under attacks. Unfortunately, Russians are shooting on other people. They are uh, uh, trying to kill everybody who is who is leaving Mariupol, Chernihiv, or some other cities. This is terrible. Reports from Mariupol have spoken about how it's almost completely destroyed. Is it, is it close to the end? Is it close to the point where it simply cannot take any more? 90% uh, of the infrastructure of Mariupol is, is uh, demolished. So this is our new Aleppo. So... Uh, I, I don't want to, to do any, any forecasting. It's, it's very hard for me. But we will fight. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's tremendously hard to accept that. But uh, we are trying to do our best. And our, our soldiers are, are real heroes there. Mr. Lubkivsky, if proper talks began, constructive talks with the Russians began, how far is your government united on what it will or won't negotiate to get a deal? It's, it's, it's very important. Our government is united, you know that. And together with the parliament and the uh, president is staying in Kiev 
as you know, he, he, he will not escape. And uh, I think it's important uh, to speak to Ukrainian people. And the uh, president will, will do that. So in case he will, he will face with the, with the issues, he cannot solve himself. So I think that uh, our society is, is uh, united maybe for the first time in, in, in our new history. So it's important to keep it united. And the uh, uh, main things uh, 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 so far, it is ceasefire and to establish mentioned, mentioned uh, uh, humanitarian corridors. Your president spelled out, as we said, his red lines about territorial integrity and sovereignty. So you would never accept the annexation of Crimea. Is that also a red line? Yes, sure. Annexation of uh, uh, Crimea was illegal, was made in, in a military way, so that cannot be accepted. Uh, same to, uh, to territories or uh, temporary occupied territories of uh, Donetsk and Lugansk uh, regions. So, but it's important to sit and to speak. Uh, we are ready for such kind of negotiations. For your information, for your information, negotiations are ongoing. Our diplomats are speaking to, to Russians right now. If those red lines are standing, what's left? Some kind of negotiated neutrality for Ukraine? You know that uh, our aspiration is to become the, the part of a civilized world, uh, to the part of NATO and European Union. I think it is very important to be focused on the way to to become member of European Union. And that's, that perspective is very clear. So I think that we, we have to go in that way and uh, to, discuss, to discuss the status of Ukraine with the, with the guarantees uh, by uh, countries like United States, United Kingdom. So I think this is the way how we can move, move ahead. But you have now accepted that you will not join NATO. President Zelensky has called Ukraine's failure to gain membership a truth that must be recognized. Does the country accept that now? Do you accept that? Uh, the, the, the point that Ukraine is going to become the uh, member of NATO was put into Ukrainian main law, into constitution. So in case, in case that decision uh, will be on the table, and now it, it's not on the table. We, we have to change the constitution from one side. And, and the main thing, I, I, I strongly believe that President Zelensky, in any case, will speak to his people. You're talking about a referendum then? Because he's yes. actually spoken about a referendum. Correct, absolutely. So the statement was made uh, yesterday and today morning that uh, we, we, we probably we will use referendums as a mechanism to establish the, 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 the real situation and to speak to, to, to Ukrainians. Mr. Lubkivsky, it seems as though there's a very narrow path to an agreement and a very high price for failure. The, the odds of you finding that path aren't very encouraging, are they? Yeah. So, uh, but uh, this is our way, this is our destiny. You know, uh, we, we, uh, I'm absolutely confident that we need to win or to, to you know, or <laughs> so this is for, for us something we, this is historical moment for Ukraine. Uh, we have a lot to do in terms of internal life to, to change a lot of things, but we want to uh, become the part of Europe. I think that it's, it's clear to everybody this, that Ukraine now is defending European values. And this is very important for our par partners to understand and to let Ukraine join uh, European Euro-Atlantic com community. While you talk about your relations with the Euro-Atlantic community, you didn't get the no-fly zone that you wanted, but you have had significant amounts of lethal military aid from the West. Do you still feel in any way that the West has let you down? No. We are very grateful to all our partners, to all our friends. We are, we are grateful to our neighbor, Poland, uh, our strategic partner. And uh, yeah, we, we, never, we, never get, we, we never got the, the uh, non-flying zone, 
but uh, we are in, uh, in, in very good cooperation with all of the partners to provide Ukraine with the weapons. Uh, we need at this stage, we need still need aircrafts and anti-air systems. So that was the, the point discussed by my Minister of Defense, Mr. Oleksiy Reznikov, yesterday uh, with uh, his British uh, colleague and, and Polish Minister for, of Defense. But more weapons are on their way, kamikaze drones, hundreds of Stinger missiles, also different hardware from Italy, Denmark, Germany and other EU forces. You're happy with the response you got? Yes, we are. Your president, though, seemed particularly annoyed by what he saw as an, an inadequate response from Israel. Is that true? He used some pretty strong words about them. Yeah, it was, it was a statement uh, to, to Knesset. And it is in his statement, uh, President Zelensky was very clear. But from the other side, to make we, we uh, you know, our relations uh, uh, with, the, with the Israel are very close. Uh, thousands of, of Ukrainians live there. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, Ukraine is the homeland for, for a lot of, of, of Israeli people. So, and that's why his, his statement, his uh, address, was very emotional because Ukrainian president is, is Jewish. So, so that's why we really expect uh, from Israel as well as from other countries like India to, to make very strong and very clear statements related to Russian aggression. But from the other side, we cannot accuse any country, you know, that they are providing us with the weapons or with the support or not. No, we are grateful for everybody, but everybody should find a way how to help Ukraine. You're surrounded by death, destruction, misery in your country. What's been the worst moment for you personally in the last month? Uh, it was a death of a very close friend of mine. I cannot disclose his, his name. He's a real fighter. Uh, but that was the, the tragedy for, first of all, for his family and uh, for, for me personally, because I knew that, that person. How hard is it to, to carry on after something like that? I don't know. I don't know. It's impossible. You know, every death for me, it's like, uh, it's like shoot into my, into my heart. It's not easy to, you know, to overcome all these things. I'm, I'm quite a strong person. And uh, I have a lot of experience based on my Balkan uh, the, the career. I mean, I, I, I spent uh, in total almost 10 years uh, working in the uh, former Yugoslavia and then in, in Croatia. I used to be ambassador to that country, to Croatia. So it's not easy, but uh, something like that happened to me already. It was in 1999 when I spent 78 days in Belgrade during NATO campaign against the regime of Slobodan Milosevic. But that was not my country. But I know what is the war. And uh, now war came back uh, to me again. You talked earlier about the newfound unity in Ukraine. Is it the collective war effort that motivates people now? Yeah, you know uh, that. Uh, you know what was the idea of Putin? He he came to Ukraine with the idea to make free Ukraine from fascists, but he is the real fascist, together with his army and with his uh, leadership. I met a lot of people uh, coming from uh, Kharkiv, from uh, uh, Sume, from Chernigiv, where they were trying to to leave their places and to move to the western part of Ukraine. And they were asking me with only one question. We are half Russians. We speak Russian. Uh, we are fascists. A lot of Jews uh, were, appro approached me with the same question. So Putin accused that people uh, that they are fascists. They're not fascists. They're Ukrainians. They love their country. And they will stay, stay, they, they will stay till the end. So th this, is, this is the make, main mis mistake I think made by Russian intelligence. Uh, I think that Putin's dream was to reach Kyiv and to have parade here uh, like in three, four days. And that never happened. 
Another mistake may have been to underestimate the morale of uh, the Ukrainian people. Um, the polls have been charting, the opinion polls have been charting that mood. Have you been surprised at how upbeat some of them have been? The rating agency did a telephone poll of 1,200 people across Ukraine last week. 91% said they felt hope when thinking about the situation in the country. Is that really credible, do you think? Uh, uh, you see, the, the moral and the spirit of Ukrainians is, uh, is very high. Uh, people are very well motivated. Uh, uh, you know, from one side, they are trying to, to escape and they are looking for the safe places. But from the other side, I think the support and the, the, uh, the belief into, into our uh, victory is, is very high. I, I, I'm very proud to be Ukrainian. I'm very proud to be the part of this, this people. Your president has spoken of a, a strategy for what he called national resilience, um, designed to deal, I think, with different scenarios like a full-on invasion. How detailed is that strategy? And has it helped to give people confidence, do you think? Uh, I think it's, it's too far to, to speak in details about strategy. The president is... Uh, is, is, is sending to everybody very clear and very strong messages. Stay brave. The Ukrainian army will defend you. And uh, I think that uh, now the main, the main uh, scenario or the main thing is uh, to protect uh, Kyiv and other cities. So, as you, as you know, uh, Russians did not uh, succeed taking into surrender Ukrainian cities. Maybe the exclusion is... is uh, is Mariupol, but the rest of the cities are, are, are fighting, and the, uh, the moral and the spirit of people is, uh, and army is very high. Your president also had an unusual phrase. He said, um, we are on the brink of surviving this war. I think he said that a few hours ago, on the brink of surviving this war. Um, does that mean that you'll be able to force a stalemate, and is that at the moment, the best you can hope for? I think so. I'm absolutely, uh, I agree with, with my president. And uh, I think that he was very clear in his words. Do you have any confidence that China could play any mediating role with Russia? Because that's something else that people have suggested. Or is China only interested in itself and the, the chance to join a new anti-Western alliance? What do you think? I, I think so. Uh, I, I think that China should not uh, interfere into 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 this war on the Russian side. So it's 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 the role of of China uh, should and could be uh, uh, tremendous. Uh, you remember that uh, President uh, Biden sent very strong messages together with his uh, uh, the, the, the advisor Sullivan, very strong mes messages to to China. But yes, I think uh, so. Now, as as we can see, China is uh, is a part. From, from, from this war. I, but I think that uh, the role of China might be, might be significant. As this conflict goes on, do you also have your idea, your, your thoughts and your concentration on international justice? Is this something you're thinking of? Are you documenting uh, the yeah. potential war crimes that are taking place? Are you working with the International Criminal Court, the chief prosecutor, who's also expressed interest in uh, putting together evidence and building um, winnable case on war crimes, if that's possible in the future. Um, how important is that idea of international justice to you? We, we, possess, we possess a lot of facts, uh, a lot of documents, uh, a lot of uh, evidences that uh, can prove that uh, Russia and the, her president, they, they are the criminals. So we, yes, we are going to the International Criminal Court. We established already uh, a good cooperation with them. So uh, investigation is ongoing and we will provide, we already provided and we are going to provide a lot of evidences to, to that institution. One more, one more interesting thing is that uh, uh, how we can negotiate, a, how we can make an agreement uh, with a uh, with the world, with the international criminal. It's also the question we need to, to, to find the answer. Do you think you'll ever get your 
old life back again, Mr. Lubkiewski, or is it inevitable that you'll have to build a new kind of life full of uncertainty and insecurity? Yes, I believe in that. You know, uh, the, uh, the, in, t in 2012, I used to be the tournament director for uh, most successful tournament in the history of UEFA, Euro 2012. I was leading the office uh, representing UEFA in Ukraine, and we did uh, we did tremendous job. Uh, that was the biggest and the most successful project in my life, I believe. I want to to come back to my usual life, to see my wife, my kids. This is normal. I think this is the will of all Ukrainians uh, who left their homes. Markian Lubkiewski, it's been good to have you on Conflict Zone. Thank you very much for giving us your time. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank having me with you.